In this tutorial we're going to be using Spine to animate our UI. Spine is one of the best 2D animation softwares available on the market and what's even better is that it can be easily used with Unity. This way we can completely ignore the built-in animation system which has a lot of flaws and animate everything outside of Unity. These are only some examples what we can do with Spine. Keep in mind we won't be going to, into the basics but if you have worked with any software that's uh, has animation system or a timeline, it's very similar to that. First, let's open Spine. To make things easier, we're going to use one of the default examples the Spine provides. Go to Examples and open the Spinosaurus project. When the project opens, we need to change the view to animation by clicking on the setup text on the top left. Now we can see our timeline with the animated objects. When you click play, you can see that we have animated logo and three buttons for the menu with transition, scale and color change. This will be our initial animation of the menu, so the end of it should be how the menu will look like when it's idle. But currently at the end we can see that the quit button doesn't have the same out transition as the other buttons, so let's change that. On the right side, under the draw order, select quit element, now the timeline displays only his animations. We can see that there is only one scale transition compared to the settings, which has scale and out. This can easily be changed, because the animations of the buttons are going to be the same, we can just select all the keys on the timeline and copy them. We also need to check the spacing between the different transitions, which is currently 8 frames, so when we go back to the quit timeline, we know where to put the keys, we just copy it. Just go to the frame you want to place them, which is 87 in our case, and paste. Now we have our end animation for the quit button, so the initial animation is ready. What we have to do next is to create a hover in and out for every button. On the right side, under animations, you can see all the animations that this project have. To create a new one, just select animations and click on new animation. Let's name it play hover in. After that create another one and name it play hover out. We do this for all the buttons. Keep in mind only changing the dot on the left of the name of the animation changes the selected animation. When we have created all variants, let's select the idle animation and also select under draw order the quit button. Now select the keys for our hover in animation and change animation object to the quit hover in and just paste the keys. As you can see now, our quit button has the hover in animation. The only thing that is missing is that its position is not the correct one. So let's go back to our end position, which will be our idle position of the quit button. You can do it in a couple of ways. You just copy the transition key or get the translate value and go back to the hover in timeline. And if we're using the value itself, just paste it in the translate field and click on the key icon. This will create a new key with that value. Now our button is at the correct position. Do the same for all the hover in and hover out animations. Once we're done, we need to export our project so we can work with it in Unity. Click on Spine, Export, choose your output folder, click Export,
open the folder and you see the generated files. Here we need to change our Atlas file to atlas.txt or Unity won't recognize it as an Atlas. Now we need to get the spine asset and import it in the Unity project. The link will be in the description. Open your project, go to Assets, Import Package, Custom Package and select it. Click Import. After that, let's create a new folder and name it Menu and decide that we're going to place all the exported files from our Spine project. Good. Now, we have to create a C-sharp script which we will only use for our button events. Let's import spine into our file with spine.unity to access our menu elements, we create a variable of type skeleton graphic and create a method for every button animation we just made. To run any animations, we write skeleton graphic dot animation state dot set animation one, then the name of the animation, the way as it's in spine. And then false. Do this for all the animations. We put 1 as the first parameter. This is to tell the animation on which track we want it to run. We put 1 because our idle animation runs on track 0 by default and we don't want to override it. Last parameter is for looping, that's why we put as false. Now let's create a new canvas and in it create a span skeleton graphic. In the skeleton data, load our menu skeleton. Also add the menu script we created as a component and set the skeleton graph value. If we click play now, we can see the idle animation running. To make our buttons respond to our cursor, let's create a new row image for each of the buttons.
then add a new component called Bond Follower Graphic. Click on Bond Name, Root, and then select the Bond for our button. Do this for all of them. You can see when we attach a bone, the white box goes on the position the bone is located. When we are done, let's fix the width of our raw image button and make it transparent. Let's create a new event trigger component and add pointer events to it for pointer enter and pointer exit for every button animation we have. When we are done, let's click on play and we can see it, our menu works. When our pointer goes in and out of a button, it triggers the animation. Also, you can see because we have placed all the buttons on track 1, it smoothly transitions between the different buttons. That was it, thank you for watching, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe for more.